There is something that you must believe as you approach the study of the Word of God. It is the most important requirement for effective Bible study. And that is what I want to tell you in this video. This is Grace Tidings. Hi, this is Williams from Grace Tidings, the platform for evangelism and discipleship. There is more that you can learn on this topic on Grace Tidings website. Please check it out when you get a chance. You see, the Bible is the book of life, the content of which is so powerful, it can give and literally change lives. It is sharper than any two-edged sword and capable of piercing to the deepest parts of the human heart, thereby revealing its thoughts and intents. Accepting its truth leads to everlasting life, while rejecting it leads to everlasting condemnation. Have you ever wondered why the Bible is so powerful and unique? How is it that it has lived through various vicious oppositions and several attempts to read the word of it, and yet it still survived till this day? There is no other reason for this than the God of the Bible himself, the source of scriptures. So as you approach your Bible study, you must do so with this important truth in mind. Bible study will mean very little or nothing to you until you are fully persuaded that the Bible is the word of God. It is not just a book that contains some of the words of God. It is itself the representation of God and of his authority in this world. Therefore, your Bible study must begin with your confidence in this truth. That is, God is the source of scripture. Otherwise, it will be fruitless. You see, there is no better time to talk about this than now. Because not only has the world turned its back on the truth, many believers and even some church leaders are no longer taking any stand for the scripture. And you have those who claim that we cannot trust some parts of the Bible to be true. Others even say that we cannot know anything for sure. And these are even among the so-called believers. It is therefore extremely essential for us to be reminded of how we got the Bible, the Word of God. Does the Bible tell us anything about its source? As a matter of fact, it does. I will have to take you back to the Bible because there is no better source for this information than the Bible itself. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All scripture, not some, all, is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for instruction in righteousness. God gave us his words through inspiration. That means those human writers were inspired and moved by God to write all that they wrote. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. It doesn't come from any private source. Verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. These holy men of God spoke and wrote the words given to them by God. So it is not my intention to address the process of inspiration in this study, but suffice it to say that these men did not write down their own opinions. They recorded for us 
the words of God as he wanted us to have it. And the result of this is the Bible. The very word of God, tried and true, completed without errors and accompanied with God's promise to preserve it forever. In Psalm 12, verse 6, the Bible says, The words of the Lord are pure words, as silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified seven times. Verse 7 in that passage says, Thou shalt keep them, O Lord, thou shalt preserve them from this generation forever. And this takes me to some of the attributes of the scriptures, which are also part of the attributes of the God of the Bible himself. Two adjectives have been ascribed to the scriptures, and these are inerrant and infallible. I will mention one more, which is sufficient. The idea of inerrancy and infallibility is that the Bible, the Word of God, is exempt from errors or mistakes. And that is true based on whom God has revealed himself to be. For instance, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 4, the Bible says that he, that's God, he is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. King David says in Psalm 31 verse 5, Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth. In Jeremiah 10 verse 10, the Bible says that the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and an everlasting king. When Israel walked away from following God, they were said in uh, Second Chronicles chapter 15 verse 3 that they had been without the true God. The point is this. God is true. And he is the God of truth. And his word, which is the representation of him, shares the same attributes. And you don't have to take my words for it. Listen to Jesus Christ himself when he was praying for his disciples in John chapter 17, verse 17. Jesus says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As I've mentioned earlier, there is one more attribute of scripture, and that is sufficient. If God has really spoken through the scriptures, by his son, which he did, because the Bible tells us that, then the Bible, the scripture, is sufficient. In other words, the Bible gives us all that we need to know about God. You don't get to know everything about God by reading the Bible, but you get sufficient details in the Bible to be whom God wants you to be. Therefore, when it comes to the matters of the knowledge of God and the way of salvation, all that you need is the Bible. It is simply sufficient. And this is why you need to study the Bible. Whether you like it or not, whether you believe this or not, the Bible is the only book that shows you the way to God. And as you approach your Bible study, you must do so being fully persuaded that it is the Word of God. And whenever you open the book and begin to read, God himself is speaking to you. If you are not saved or not sure about your salvation, you can get saved today and get the guarantee of eternal life. Believe that you are a sinner and there is absolutely nothing that you can do to save yourself. 
and believe that Jesus Christ suffered and died for your sins. He was sacrificed in your place. Trust in what he did for you and you will be saved. Check out this video as well. It tells you more about how to be saved. In the coming video, I will share with you three reasons why it is important to know and believe the true source of Scripture. Watch out for it. Thank you for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you in Jesus.